Zip Zip here. I've got another video for you. This time I'm going to be covering a little bit of strategy. So I was driving around in my Excelsior shortly after the Excelsior first uh, came into the shop. And uh, while I was trying to get everybody to come in the same direction, I realized a little something. I was watching the minimap closely to see who, if anyone, was going to actually be following. And I was suddenly reminded of a chessboard. In my youth, I played a lot of chess. And what I learned playing chess, I've applied to all the games I've played since, except for Blitz, strangely. I think this is because Blitz was the first non-pure strategy turn-based game that I've played in a really long time. And as this game here unfolded, and I kept glancing over at the minimap, it suddenly dawned on me that one of the key ways I used to play chess is directly applicable to Blitz. And since this realization, I've been keeping this strategy I used to follow in mind when playing Blitz, and I did notice an upswing in my win rate. Like any new way of thinking, or even old way of thinking revisited, it does take time and practice to get the hang of it. And when it's been working, it's been working very well for me. Most players who are any good are already doing all these things, and I figured maybe it's time to do a video that lays all this system out for new players. So in my chess playing days, this book called Play Winning Chess really helped me along greatly. It was an easy system that didn't require memorization, just practice to and repetition just to get in the hang of doing these things. It had four key strategic elements and over the years I've used this strategy for a lot of different games such as the Civilization series, uh, multiple RPGs, and uh, real-time strategy games. As we get started here, it's important to break down the match into three areas. Opening game, middle game, and end game. We break the game down this way because each phase has its own set of goals, and accomplishing these goals make the overall battle easier. And any task is easier to get done when you break it down into phases. The opening game, of course, is clearly defined by the fact that you're actually starting a battle. It's in the opening where we do things like survey the opposing team, how many heavies, mediums, tank destroyers they have. You gotta decide on a course of action such as going to the mill on Malinovka or going to the hill on mines. And then you gotta get the team uh, agreed with the best move and get as many guys over as possible. The middle game is the most important part of the match. You can tell you've reached the middle game when combat has begun. In the middle game, it's really important to be flexible, change your plans if you have to, save as many hit points as you can in this phase of the battle because you're going to need them towards the end game, and the strategic elements of force, space, and time are really at play here the most. The start of end game isn't as clearly defined, but there are three signs. Um, one of them is when all the major tanks on either or both sides are out of the game. Another sign is when one of the teams has undergone a total strategic collapse. And if somebody is trying to capture the base with a high likelihood of success. Important things to remember about Endgame are that low tier tanks with a lot of hit points remaining can now carry the battle safely. Uh, medium tanks uh, will dominate Endgame for the most part. Uh, it's safe now for tank destroyers and thinly armored tanks to play a more aggressive role in the end game portion of a battle. Now we will discuss the four strategic elements. Force, time, space, and pawn structure. And believe it or not, pawn structure does still apply to Blitz, even though it's derived from chess. Force is simply the strength and number of vehicles on an entire team or in one localized area of a map. Factoring tiers 
against teams of equal skill, the team with more heavy tanks will generally have an advantage in force. Tank destroyers, because of their good guns, tend to add a lot of force to teams composed mostly of medium tanks. If your team doesn't have as many heavy tanks as the opposing team, it's best to engage high tier heavy tanks first in order to swing force back in your favor. Try to avoid liquidation battles where you keep trading tanks back and forth with the opposing team. You want to get ahead. You can gain a large advantage in the battle by moving a lot of tanks into one area of the map, concentrating your force. If you're forced into a liquidation style battle, make sure as you trade tanks they're favorable trades. To properly use force, here's what you do. The team should stay together as much as possible. Be sure to try to get the team to focus fire as that's the best way to bring your force to bear. Use map terrain to gain localized force advantages by isolating your team from other parts of the map and concentrating force. Between two targets of equal health, always target the stronger opponent first to gain direct advantage in force. Now let's look at a quick case study for uh, the map Middleburg. If all the team goes hill and you meet up with all the opposing team, you're going to have one big battle and the best team will win. So the better tactics will rule the day. If your whole team goes hill, but only some of the opposing team goes hill, you'll have a localized force advantage and you'll be able to dispatch those enemy units very quickly. This second scenario, which is the most common thing to actually happen when team goes all hill, gives you the best setup for endgame. If only some of your team goes hill, but all the opposing team goes, it's not going to be a good outcome for endgame. Going all town can work, but it's a harder thing to do because in town you don't get as many avenues to focus fire and you're more easily flanked, you're more easily sniped, and it requires greater tactics, which a lot of the player base in Blitz just can't side scrape or angle properly or peekaboom properly. So average players or below average players will do a lot worse in town than they will on the hill. We'll finish off the first part of this video series with a quick bit of gameplay. I chose a low tier battle here for the sake of keeping this video reasonably short. In this battle we're going to see very nicely how when a team focuses fire and concentrates force you can win very quickly and very easily. You can see in the minimap here the green team comes up the hill and we're going to have that lower right quadrant, all our tanks there, some facing one side of the hill, some facing the other, but everybody able to support each other. To be fair, in this battle the red team cooperated a lot because they only came one at a time or two at a time, which really accentuated the force our team could bring to bear. Note here how quickly focused fire reduces the hit points of these tanks. And if you notice on the mini map, uh, a couple of reds went to town. One was already wiped out, and the other one gets wiped out shortly. But basically, our team was able to focus fire on that side of the hill as well. I'm playing forward here, uh, ahead of my team, they're all behind me, and I'm about to get rushed by two tanks here. But because of the force I have in this area of the map, my team behind me and myself, these two reds don't stand a chance. That's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video 
and be sure to check out parts 2 and 3 and uh, subscribe if you like them. Thanks a lot.